What's up everyone, welcome to Clown World News. We're talking about some clown drama, but this clown drama revolves around some pretty pertinent information. So we're gonna cover it. Like, we're gonna pretend to be BuzzFeed today or TMZ or whatever the fuck, because Cardi B's hilarious. So Cardi B gets into it with Candace Owens on Twitter and Instagram. They have an internet beef going on. Now why could this be? Could it be that Candace Owens' book comes out in 12 days? Maybe. Could it be that Cardi B wants to stay relevant because Wet Ass Pussy was at number one and it's kind of a stupid ass song and I don't know if it can last that long but maybe she can use this to push it and now people will ironically be playing Wet Ass Pussy because it's funny because it triggers conservatives? Maybe. But who knows? What I do know is that Cardi B did do an interview with Joe Biden which is hilarious. It's, <laughs> it's just like a bunch of a bunch of nothing being said, and um, I don't even know. It's like she doesn't know what's going on in her head. Joe Biden doesn't know what's going on in general. It's just like a back and forth. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. From what I can get, it's just that whole interview is just trying to cash in on the black. You know, let's get the black vote. Who's got the number one song right now and who's black? Cardi B? Uh, okay, yeah, let's get her. Let's do an interview with her. So Cardi B responded to controversial blah yeah whatever yeah Candace Owens blah 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 we got we got we actually have the stuff we got we got the goods but this is a good point right here real quick before we get into the goods since most black people didn't have the spine to admit that Ben Shapiro was a hundred percent correct about Cardi B and how her music and platform contributes to the disintegration of black culture and values here you go yeah so Ben Shapiro did a whole expose on wet ass pussy. <laughs> Where he basically said that, yo, this song is degenerate, this is bad, this is destroying black culture, like, you're contributing to that, Cardi B, this is not good. And everybody made fun of him saying his wife probably has a dry ass pussy or some shit like that. And, ah, it, it, hilarity ensued. But let's look. If you don't know who Candace Owens is, just look at her Twitter. On August 28th, she tweeted this. Only women can give birth. Only women can menstruate. Only women can have miscarriages. Only Marxist psychopaths believe any of the above statements are hateful. I'll go ahead and give her a little heart there. Thank you, Candace Owens. <laughs> so that's Candace Owens, but I believe she is, in fact. Let's look. She does. You guys, T minus 12 days until my first book finally hits stands. Yeah, she's got a book coming out. She's aggressive. She's she's smart. She knows what she's doing. Whether or not, I mean, I don't disagree with anything she's saying, but it is. You got to point out. We won't be fair. Point out, she does have a book coming out. So Cardi B says some shit like, let's look. <laughs> Lastly, asking racist, this is Candace Owens. Lastly, asking racist Joe Biden to lower your taxes in the same breath that you asked for free universal health care is about as thick as it gets. When you stick to music, you can get left alone. When you dabble in politics, you will get called out for platforming ignorance. And then Cardi B responds. Well, paying, ta paying taxes is something that, as much as I hate, it's a reality. I will always have to pay, but I'll rather my tax money go to free education than police funding. Use my money on something useful. Your president used our tax money to, f to, to fund his c empty campaign <laughs> runs. And then Candace Owens replies, Number one, your tax dollars already go to free education. Genius. Two, no campaign uses tax dollars for funding. That is illegal. Three, the funding police initiatives have led to 200% increases in black men getting shot in inner cities. Stop supporting black people dying. Ooh, but it, it gets better. And you are encouraged millions. <coughs> so again, it's Owens. You are encourage, encouraging millions to go vote for the man that locked up entire generations of black men. Maybe go Google Joe Biden in 1994 crime bill. Joe Biden used you. Bernie Sanders used you. Neither of them know, neither of them like or know your music. They think you're dumb. And you are encouraging millions to vote for a man who laugh every time a black man gets killed by a cop and tell millions of Americans to drink bleach. Trump didn't even have you talking at the Republican convention. He thinks you're dumb. Massa, Massa did you dirty, but you mad at me? So this whole, this whole thing is just... The problem is that Cardi B 
doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. Candace Owens, lo lo love it or hate her, she's coming correct. She knows about the Joe Biden crime bill. She knows about all this stuff. She knows that Trump didn't actually tell people to drink bleach and that he probably didn't laugh in front of every time a black man got killed. So she replies, one, produce the clip of Trump laughing at black men getting killed, you lying fraud. Two, I turned down filming a spot for the RNC convention. Three, you encourage millions of young girls to spread their legs and you admitted to date raping men, so don't even start on the bleach lie. Damn! It's, it's a cat fight in this bitch. But real talk, Cardi B did on live admit to date raping men and robbing them, giving them roofies, date raping them, and then stealing from them. She admitted to doing that, and she wasn't canceled or anything like that. Nothing happened to her. And she encourages millions of young girls to spread their legs. Cardi B shared this choreographer's wet-ass pussy dance, then it went viral on TikTok. Yeah. Exactly. There's a wet-ass pussy dance challenge, and now people on TikTok, they have a thing where they do it in front of their parents to... And I think some of them are playing it up where their parents are like a part of the skit, but sometimes they're not. It's all just like, what is this? Why are you disgusting, Cardi B? What are you what are you doing? What's your goal, Cardi B? Cardi B doesn't even know what's going on. And now you will be sued. <laughs> For what? Alright, so let's check Cardi B's Twitter. Okay, so we got this part right here. Cardi B retweeted. 85% of white people that are killed in America each year are murdered by other white people. Yet we never hear the term white on white crime. Black on black crime is a term that's been coined specifically for black people to create feelings of self-hatred and disunity within our race. It's a tactic to divide and conquer. Or, call me crazy. The term black on black crime was coined specifically to designate something that is a crime from black on black. Intro racial crime of a black person committing a crime against a black person. Maybe that's why it was coined. Maybe the reason why you don't hear about white on white crime that often is because there's not this giant systemic movement because you love the word systemic maybe there's it's because there's not this huge movement trying to use statistics to convince people that america and the police are systemically racist and they're not adding in all the actual parts to think about all the different pieces in this giant cog machine you're just taking this one and then this one and then you're trying to cover up all the other ones and say look at this and that you can even say 85% of white people that are killed in America each year are murdered by other white people. It's, you need to know how many white people there are in America. And there's a lot. There's 197 million. So, like, without knowing the actual statistics on, like, how many and whatnot, you, these, these, you can skew this stuff so easily. And you may, if you're watching this video, you may have seen charts like this. They're hard to find. They, you cannot Google and find these very easily. So murder of blacks and whites in the U.S. 2013 for one million members of the murderer's race. This is what Black Lives Matter is protesting. Blacks go by whites. The rate is 0 0.77 per one million. And here's blacks go by blacks. Massive number. Ma literally, it's exponential. Here's why. Here's why you hear about black on black crime. Because 49 shot, 10 killed, an alarming Memorial Day weekend violence. And in fact, you don't hear black on black crime as often as you probably should. All the people talking about Black Lives Matter, those people should be talking about this. They should be talking about the fact that 49 people were shot in one weekend in Chicago. One weekend, 49 people shot. That is insane. And four of them were juveniles, were kids. This says three were juveniles. One of them was a child, I believe. I mean, it's accidental, but still, this needs to be addressed. Also, there's a 
There's a fire bar in here that Candace Owen has about babies. Let me see if I can find it. Attacking an unborn child because Cardi B says, Yo, baby, singing wop, wop, wop. This some dry ass pussy. Candace Owens, attacking an unborn child. How very Democrat of you. While I have you, did you know your party has supported the slaughter of over 18 million black babies since 1973? She's talking about abortion. Did you know the most unsafe place for a black child is in its mother's womb because of your party? Damn. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if, you, if you're going to make your whole platform Black Lives Matter, and you're going to pull out statistics to try to play statistics kung fu, you, I don't know, maybe check to make sure that your statistics can hold weight. And that if they were flipped on you, perhaps... Perhaps it was better when nobody was really bringing up the statistics games because you want to play the statistics games Here's Wikipedia of all places according to the US Department of Justice African Americans accounted for 52.5 percent of all homicide offenders from 1980 to 2008 with whites 45 percent another 2.2 the offending rate for African Americans was almost eight times higher than whites and the victim rate six times higher, meaning black on black crime. Most homicides were intro racial, meaning within their own race, with 84% of white victims killed by whites and 93% of African American victims killed by African Americans. So, again, look at this African Americans accounted for 52.5% of all homicide offenders from 1980 to 2008. How many people are there? How many black people are in the United States? 13. This is where that statistic comes from. This, you can't even type this out. Maybe I can say it. I don't know. But the meme is, despite making up only 13% of the population, blacks account for more than half of the murders in the United States. Now, why, 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 how do these numbers work? How is this possible? If whites, if whites make up 45% and, and blacks make up 52 then how is the offending rate for blacks almost eight times higher than whites? It's because blacks make up 13% of the population, while whites make up 60% of the population. There's 47 million blacks in the United States. There's 197 million whites in the United States. So when you consider that, these statistics, suddenly, you're not painting a very good picture. It's almost like Black Lives Matter wants to expose these things, but indirectly, and then... No, I don't think so. Never mind. I take that <laughs> I think Black Lives Matter is just some weird Democrat, George Soros, weird ploy that that got like people organically pushed it because it was easy to signal boost. In much the same way that like free college is easy to signal boost from college kids, like of course they're going to share that, and they're probably not going to look into where that money comes from or how or anything like that. Now I definitely think we need college reform, but things like free college, free everything, free this, free that. It's just easy to signal boost without actually considering where does that money come from, etc. So things like this, it's easy to signal boost Black Lives Matter. Hey, black people are getting unfairly treated by police and by the whatever. Well, yeah, because every single song and movie that we watch talks about it. But, it, you know, it, it is going on to a degree. It has been, especially. We can look back. We'll find out. Let, let me check this chart. So, again, look at this chart. This is the data they, they source because you can't just take the charts word for it. And it involves math. It's hard to do. I just wanted to do this so that like people can know that you can source this stuff and it really does exist. It's very real. So the UCR, the Uni Uniform Crime Report by FBI Gov, Homicide Data Table 6. Here we go. Homicide Data, data Table 6. Here it shows. So when the, the race of the offender is white and the victim is white, there's... 2,500 cases of homicide, of murder. Now remember the total population. And then uh, we have when the blacks are the offender and it's blacks, 2,200. Now remember the total population. That's what's creating these huge percentages and rates. Even black on white crime is, is nearly double and that's not even considering the per million. It's nearly double, just flat out. But you don't see a big protest about that. Why? Because I don't think it's necessary. I don't think a 
focusing so much on these statistics is really that great of a thing. I mean, definitely be aware of what's going on in the world to a degree, but like, I'm not going to judge people I see on the street based on these numbers I read here. It's definitely not a way to go forward. It's not a strategic brain position, disposition to have. It doesn't help anyone really. But if you're going to play this game where you pull this shit up and you're stuck going to, you know, talking about Black Lives Matter and this, that, the other, let's let's play the game. Let's, let's go. Let's, if you want to talk statistics, let's look at statistics. Here's another one, though. This is actually good. This one's decent. And this is up to 2016, so maybe in the last four years it got worse. But if you look, as the, year go, as the years go down, the population goes up, and the violent crime rate actually goes down. So here's the crime rate going down. Here it went up from 4.9 to 5.3, 5 but you can see it's going down. And then over here you can see the numbers of violent crimes going down as the population goes up. You can see the violent crime rate in 1997 was very high, and it's down almost 200. But also... This is missing the last four years, so maybe shit got crazy. I don't know. If you have any information on the last four years, please send it my way. But this is interesting, too. If you look at this, we're talking about um, the race and then the ages of violent crime, of homicide, in fact. So here we have whites, and then right next to them is African American. <clears throat> now, what I want to point out is that there's no homicide rates of any of these people uh, from the five to eight years old. So about nine years old, that's when nine to 12, that's when kids start to kill people, I guess. So you look at the white, we got three, you got seven or whatever. Okay. So now the point, the, what I want to point out is, is that if you look at the homicide rates, the generation of African Americans that are 29 years old, so the generation born in the 90s, the 90s kids, whatever you call it, those millennials, what are those, Z, I don't, I don't remember. But those those have high rates. Look at how much higher the homicide rate is for them, for the younger generation, the ones up and coming now, compared to whites up and coming now. However, if you go back beyond that, and you look at kids born in the 80s and 70s, white people are definitely, they're killing more than black people. Definitely, the homicide rate. But this is also not per million, so you got to consider that. But what is it with old white people that they just like, how are 70, 39, 70 year olds murder people? 75, 81? 81 people over the age of 75 have murdered somebody. Only five black people over the age of 75. So there's that, you know? Like, But you can just see this generational shift. And I believe right around here when the generational shift really happens, it's because uh, black culture, gangster rap was, was introduced. I say given, because I don't, I don't think that shit organically formed. I think that it was given, and then people wanted to push it because it was hot and it was popping. And then all of a sudden, those kids grow up listening to gangster rap, and then the crime, the homicide rates skyrocket. So, all right, but let's be fair. So while blacks are committing way more uh, homicides and violent crime in the United States, white people are doing way more drugs. White people just cannot stop doing drugs. Damn. Yeah, so there's a lot of white people doing drugs. They own most of the percentage. But again, you'd have to consider the population and whatnot. And all these statistics involve all that noise. But this isn't really about the statistics and the noise and the racism. This is about Cardi B versus Candace Owens. I think Candace Owens wins it when she posts this video of Malcolm X. So let's watch this. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and are over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. I yeah, so back then, I guess, like, this was, like, a really famous... I don't know if I... <laughs> like, nowadays, when I see this, I think, like, Agent 5, we're in the clear, Eagle landed. That's, that's what I think, like fucking, uh, what is that, Metal Gear Solid? 
But everybody was doing that back then. But also, shout out Malcolm X for saying, calling them clowns. He's basically saying, why are all of these, why are all these black people that get brought up as leaders and influencers, they're all like basketball players, and, you know, and they're all musicians. Why? Comedians. Whereas, like, you, like what happened to people like Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King Jr. and, you know, like, scholars, Frederick Douglass, what happened to these types of people? And, and they shut them down now. You'll, you'll have people shut down people like Thomas Stilwell, or Thomas Stilwell, like Steele. You'll have people shut down those guys and call them Uncle Toms because they're not hip and cool with the liberal agenda. So, I don't know. I think in the, the boxing match that was Candace Owens versus Cardi B, definitely going to give it to Candace Owens. That's going to be a unanimous victory for me. Oh, her book Blackout is available on Amazon. Yeah, you can ah, whatever. I don't, I'm not going to show your book, but I guess I just did. So, yeah, Cardi B, uh, probably not the best choice to stand up against <coughs> Candace Owens. But you want to know it's the worst matchup? Cardi B versus Candace Owens is kind of like what it's going to be like when Joe Biden debates Donald Trump. It's it's just it's not going to go well for the liberals. It really isn't. The real <clears throat> the liberals can't find anyone better. Well, maybe that's because if you actually conceptualize what these ideas that you're supposed to be backing are, they don't hold up under logic. And while you might be a great actor insert various actor or comedian or whatever dude on the left who hates Trump and hates freedom, I guess. Well, you might be good at acting and lying and all that shit. That's what acting is. It's basically just like wholesome lying. You can't, if somebody in real life holds you up and holds your ideas and goes, hey, wait a minute. These are translucent, my dude. <laughs> like, I can see through this shit. And you're not going to be able to act your way out of that. Because there's acting, and then there's being a class act. And being a class act, an unironic class act, means that you have integrity, a spine, a backbone, you have a foundation. Your ideas come from something, like, higher than you, and I don't mean handlers and bosses and marionette controllers. I mean, like, something beyond you, whether you call that, you know, cold logic, or you call it God, or whatever, faith, whatever it is that you have it, it's something that people can't convince you to give it up so easily that you can't just be persuaded against it. So I don't know. Maybe it's all ridiculous. Maybe they're just hyper polarizing the sides for a reason. But it seems like in the clear cut case of which side I personally would, would want to support, I think that the liberals are batshit crazy. And I'm sure that they think conservatives are batshit crazy. I, I just say that in this particular moment, in this one, not all of them, not all the time, in this particular moment in time, definitely going to support the, the conservatives. Dev, that's just my, my feeling. So yeah, uh, that wraps up this Clown World News. If you enjoy, normally it's probably not about bullshit celebrity gossip like this, but I thought this was fucking hilarious. I thought it was funny. If you support that, you can check out the description of the Patreon. My band is up tomorrow. I get a post finally on my main channel. Ooh wee, what, what video should it be? I think I might just do Giants and not have to talk about shit that might get me censored again right away. Maybe I'll give it some time. I don't know. We'll see what happens in the news because I go where the news takes me. So yeah, take care. Be a good person. Call your mom. Also, shout out to my patrons. Cause this is a new webcam. Much appreciated. New mic setup. Love you guys. I love my mom. My mom's a saint. My dad's a hero. I hope uh, if you're lucky, you have a similar setup. But if not, uh, still, people are people. Everyone's human. Uh, be a good person. Stay vigilant. Call your mom. Exercise. Eat good. <laughs>